So, Zorio, yeah, let me second Ezra nice woohoo in uh, welcoming you to the conversation here. I'm so, so glad you, uh, you, you responded. Um, yeah, like I said before, I, I just love how your videos have this aura of peace and uh, you know, just zen-like tranquility to them. You know, I could watch your videos all day, man. And you know, the content that you gave was, was really, really awesome. I, you know, your analysis of, you know, collapse of uh, saying true for me is the same thing as believe, is the same thing as accept, and also your analysis of how sometimes, you know, approval collapses in there as well. Uh, yeah, that, that was a, the very good analysis. So... If I understand your question correctly, um, your your question is it goes like this. You know, once we've done this collapse, right? Once we once we take this uh, subjective viewpoint, um, does there really remain any uh, use to calling a belief right or calling a belief wrong or saying a belief is, is a correct belief or a belief is an incorrect belief, right? So um, yeah, um, what could I possibly be meaning by this? You know, bizarre, counterintuitive. Uh, statement uh, that you know nobody really says anything like you know you know belief is right or wrong right <laughs> what could I possibly be talking about well uh, uh, let's go over to the uh, chalkboard and 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 I'll try to explain all right what the heck is Randy talking about here uh, so yeah I'm an analytic philosopher and uh, there's like a lot of continentals on on YouTube here so let me just uh, do it from the standpoint of uh, you know a continental philosopher Heidegger right so uh, in my perspective, our language is just a, yet another tool that we use to, uh, you know, get along in, in the world, right? So uh, I think the concept of instrumental breakdown that Heidegger uses, um, you know, he has this, you know, whole Dasein, being in the world, this flow kind of thing, right? Uh, you know, and, you know, we're just kind of in our own element until, you know, we, we use a screwdriver as a chisel and we break the screwdriver because it's not really meant to be used as a, as a chisel, right? So, um, yeah, this is like an incorrect use for the screwdriver, and it's resulted in instrumental breakdown. Basically, we were thwarted, right? So just as we can have experience instrumental breakdown uh, in, you know, physical instruments, I think we can experience, as it were, linguistic instrumental breakdown. And, and we, we experience linguistic instrument, instrumental breakdown when we use language uh, incorrectly. So, yeah, so you, what you got to wonder is, you know, correctly or incorrectly relative to what? Well, you know, like I said before, I, I'm an American pragmatist, and uh, pragmatists really have a, a nice pat answer to this, right? So, you know, it's relative to our purposes, our goals, and our aims, right? So it's like, think about what you want to achieve. What kind of person do you want to be? What kind of society do you want to live in? What kind of kids do you want your kids to be? Right? You know, how much money do you want to make? What do you want to write? What books do you want to write? What do you want to do? These are, these are the things that it's relative to, right? So if a belief helps me achieve what I want to accomplish, then I say that belief is correct. Uh, if belief does not help me to achieve this or hinders me, you know, I experience breakdown by using this belief, um, yeah, then that belief is incorrect. So, uh, yeah, this uh, pat answer that the pragmatists give is, is, is a little bit too pat. I think that, uh, you know, there's a m much more sophisticated outlook, which I, I really adopt, and this is the late, uh, very late Rorian pragmatism. Um, yeah, I'll just mention a few things in here. Uh, the subjective-objective dichotomy is really a false dichotomy. There's a third way. Intersubjective is uh, how I would describe, um, you know, this kind of stuff. Uh, I do believe that there are a handful of legitimate uses for the word true. Uh, in a previous video, I posted uh, a brief description of these. Uh, but I, it looks like it, I, it, I'm really committed at this point to making a bigger video, uh, more explaining exactly why, you know, why we would like, want to keep onto this thing. But you know, I, I'm out of time now, so let's do this another time. So uh, yeah, I've got a question for the subjectivists. Yeah, so why, why do we... Ease keep using these confusing terms, right? If true, believe, and accept are really all the same thing, um, let's just, you know, whenever I seem to mention true, I just confuse the hell out of everybody. Uh, let's just, if we mean believe, let's just say believe. And this is really the least confusing, and it, it makes the, the conversation, I think, uh, easier for newbies uh, and, and, and watchers honor to join in the conversation too, right? I mean, everybody knows what you, what you mean when you say believe. Nobody gets confused by this, right? And so the, the question I have this objective uh, number two is the same, same question I pose really for scientific succession, right? You know, what's the difference between belief and fiction? 
right? And and again, I, you know, from a pragmatist point of view, I would I would frame this in terms of uh, you know instrumental breakdown. You know, my beliefs, you know, I'm I, I'm wrong all the time, right? Uh, I suffer instrumental breakdown that way. But you know, when I'm telling a story, really, you know, there's nothing to, to break down there. I'm just you know making it up as I go along, right? So I hope this explains it at least a little bit, and I hope you'll accept a rain check. This video is already far too long. Uh, but I, I will get around to one of these days, actually, more carefully explaining exactly what my views on truth are and, and, and why I think uh, uh, the word true really does have a few uh, legitimate uses. So catch you later. Thanks so much.